Hey everybody, Hyler Tamerlane doing the usual obscurities in miniature, and today we have a priority mailbox and a special guest. So I am joined today by my brother, Barzam. Hello. And anyway, so we both got stuff from Paymaster Games who have been steadily plugging away doing their going native game, which is a small scale skirmish game with various indigenous and native, as well as mythological, cultural stuff from across the world and I got bags and Barzam here got bags so we thought we would preview and unbag the things that we got isn't that exciting all right so first up this is actually the only monster that I actually got which was kind of surprising and this is I want to say one of the Aztec stone snakes. You got your phone handy. Why don't you check this thing's name? Sapoctoli or something? I don't know. I'd yell at the kids, but they're busy doing homework. So other than a little bit of a mold slippage there along the bottom, that's an easy fix. Not too big of a deal. And he just goes like that together. The facial features, I think, are the important part. And they're nice and clean and crisp. You can see exactly what he's supposed to look like. Comes with a 40 millimeter base. Does he actually fit on the base? That's gonna be, actually he kinda does. That's surprising. And he has his little fancy tail. I almost think I originally ordered him as a decoration to go with like my lizard men and stuff. Too bad I don't have any lizard men handy. But it does look like, I mean, he'd probably fit in pretty well with him. Telecoatl, the stone serpent. I knew it was the stone serpent. Okay, telecoatl. But yeah, check it out. I mean, he's, he's totally like a nice ornamental serpent deity guardian thing to have hanging around with a bunch of seraphon stuff. Lizardman, we'll call him Lizardman. Anyway, so that's the one monster I got in this campaign. He can go hang out back there with Mr. Bloody Bradigan Pit. All right, what else we got? All right, the next baggie looks to be an Aztec with a baseball bat. Now, I don't know what these swords are called. This is the Coyote? Looks like it. Yeah, Coyote General. So it's actually one piece, which is kind of surprising. Most of the other Aztecs that I've gotten through either previous campaigns or from Paymaster directly have all been multi-part, but he's actually one solid sturdy piece. I'm curious who sculpted him. Uh, he's gonna be fun trying to get all the details and the colors on the fur, because if I remember correctly, they actually colored the fur for their uniforms, didn't they? Yeah. That's, a, that's something totally different you're showing me. Anyway. No, it's not. That's a Jaguar warrior. This is not a Jaguar. He's a coyote, I believe. All right, let's see what's in this bag. Ah, okay. This is one piece, and we're gonna hop continents up to North America. This is one of the Pacific Northwest figures. This, I wanna say, was their frog prince. He was an older model. He's been around. So again... Hey man, frog prince. Yes, okay. So I wanna say these are all based on one of the Alaskan tribes. It starts with a T, and I'm sure I'll mispronounce it. It's not on their Kickstarter page, but in my research of how to paint these guys. So, decent size. How does he stack up with our Inquisitor friend? Let's find out if I can get them both in focus. So, hmm. Looks decent enough to me. Yeah, I mean, my my thought was using a bunch of these guys for, like, doing a Frostgrave Warband, and, ah, here's the leader for said Frostgrave Warband. So always get the failure diet. Yeah, I guess. But to me, okay. So this is the Pacific Northwest Shaman. So let's slide them out of the way for a moment. So you can see he's dancing on one foot. Now this guy's kind of cool. So you'll notice he's missing a head and a hand. And that's actually because he's got a variety of them. He has... So he's got the bird with the egg in its mouth. I'm assuming that's a crow or a raven, maybe. And then, well, there's two birds, so. I don't know. I'm not up on. Yeah, it's that dude. I'm not up on my indigenous. Probably a crow. Artwork interpretation. And I'm assuming a wolf. Or a coyote. Well, yeah, but these guys are like up in Alaska. Yeah, coyotes all over the place. 
Do they have coyotes in Alaska? Maybe. That's a wolf. Anyway, so you have your choice of headdress for him. And then he has either a walking stick with a hand on it, which is kind of interesting, or some kind of ornamental spear with a face carved into it. So I'm not sure which I'm going to build him with. But again, I'm thinking for Frostgrave, why a bunch of, well, Pacific Northwesterners would have to deal, especially up in Alaska and British Columbia and that Northwest. They really would have to deal with cold climates, so. I wonder if I have any Frostgrave guys handy. I'll have to go check. Let me see. So out of curiosity, I went and grabbed some Frostgrave figures just to get a sense of scale with these guys as well. And I think they're going to scale actually even better than the GW stuff. So, you know, the North Star figures do tend to be a little bit smaller. These guys aren't gigantic, and especially with the bases, I think it does let them, you know, kind of blend in better. They're not like going to be dwarfed like if they were the Kingdom Death figures. So anyway, oh, there's the shaman getting shuffled off to the side. And then I got this big bag of stuff. So I want to say there's a couple of different things in this pile, sir. Okay. First up, I want to say this is one of our Pacific Northwest monster hunters. He might be a chieftain. He might be a monster hunter. But he's definitely, you can tell by the headdress, the cloak, sarape type thing he's got wearing. I'm, I don't know what they're called. But uh, yeah, that's definitely Northwestern style clothing. So he'll hang out over here. And right in scale with his frog prince headman friend. And I want to say, maybe this guy was the monster hunter, but he's also another. Uh, I think that's a chief. And that's my thought with the crown thing. But I do like his little totem he's got carrying around it's going to make me end up doing a lot of research online which i think is kind of cool oh, because he's a witch hunter a witch hunter okay hey well here let's pose my witch hunters together now, so those guys are both solid casts he's a little bit shorter than the other ones maybe i'll use him as like an apprentice for frostgrave since i've got the he scales really well with them. All right, and then I've got a pile of multi-part dudes. How many are there? It looks like five. Okay, these are Pacific Northwestern armored troops. So they're all multi-part. So there's a couple of different leg poses. And then there are a few different torso designs. So they have these kind of, I don't know if it's wicker I've really got to look this up online. If you look up, like, Pacific Northwest, uh... Whoa, crap. All right, so I destroyed the tar iPod that I was using to film this. So we're going to keep going with that. I will do the old-fashioned way. So as I was trying to say earlier, and I can use your hands here, so there's the five different pairs of legs, and then we have five different torsos. Some of them have the little fancy capes and cloaks. They all have that kind of funky wicker design to it and then what's interesting is so they have these kind of totem style heads that go on top of their actual faces and I know that's a terrible close-up sort of kind of you can see where my my thumbnail is you can see there's kind of like the face there above his face so they're gonna be interesting to paint and then they have a bunch of hand weapons as well so they got like these <laughs> Spiky club things. I'm sure there's an actual name for it. And they've got these picks. And the pieces themselves seem like they're going to fit in pretty well. And then we've got some little, I'm assuming, stone daggers with little carved hilts as well. So what's interesting is all of the heads that are included are totally different. They all have different little facial designs on top of their helmets. So that's pretty cool. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to build them yet. It's going to definitely require me to do some research online. Okay, so I'm going to hold this steady. And why don't you show us what you got going on there. All right, so I didn't have nearly as much money to spend on this. So I only got a few items. Um, and somewhere are the rest of the pieces. All right, so one of the main things I got was there anime girl 
Jaguar Warrior character. And I say she's an anime girl because if you saw the artwork during the Kickstarter, it was totally anime art. Yes, it was. So she's kind of pin y She's got a tail that I don't know how that thing's going to stay on there. Where does it attach? Let me see. Somewhere over her butt. Is there like a spot for it? No. Or? No, there's not. And it's like stitching on the back of it. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be fun to try and play with. But I was kind of afraid if, whether or not this was actually going to be able to match the art very well. But I think they did a pretty good job I matching say, the art. I want to say Patrick Keith, the guy that does bombshell minis, sculpted the, uh, it. The sword's a little cartoony looking, but yeah, I can live with that. Yeah, I want to say Patrick Keith, but he does tend to sculpt pretty decent looking lady models. Now, the other items I got, I got Aztec Warriors. Okay. So, much like the Pacific Northwest guys, they're also modular. I only got a couple of them, so got a pair of legs, got a couple of torsos, and I can't tell which side's front and back. Yeah, I've had that problem. They're pretty too. flat. And then we got the weapons and the heads. Put, it, yeah, so, put it by the bodies. Yeah. No, by the bodies. No, oh, like lay it down by the that's bodies. That's not coming out. But. That one is a dude wearing a coyote mask, I believe. It's a jaguar. Coyote, jaguar. It's some kind of animal. And the other head, surprisingly enough, is not a warrior's head. This is a warrior priest. Yeah. Did you intentionally order the warrior priest bundle, or did you no. just end up with one? No, that's just what I wound up with. I want to say that big giant club you have right here that looks like one of the lizard men clubs. This one? Yeah, that one. I want that... That's his, isn't it? I believe so. Does he have an extra arm that's going with him? So, the way he came equipped, he has a couple of right arms with a weapon. So, mm -hmm. there's this one with the giant club, and there's this one with the one-handed sword. And the other hand has nothing in it, because he has a fancy shield with feathers. Mm -hmm. Which will be fun to paint. The other set of arms is pretty much a great sword. Okay. So... One of these guys is going to be getting a two hand, hand large like two handed blade. Annoying. All right. So, some interesting stuff. Um, I'm going to hopefully get a hold of some more of their monsters. I had heard good things about the monsters online. Most of the copies I'd seen look pretty decent, good casts overall. I'm pretty pleased with mine. I mean, he's got a little bit of cleanup necessary down there on the bottom of his belly, but that's nothing too drastic that's going to require a lot of work i've had much worse yeah so i i gotta say the the modular guys I, I know i agree with you they are a little bit flat but i think given the proper posing now some of these like this torso right here with the cape attached with that's gonna be kind of a problem to get any kind of outside you know other than just yeah straight up it's gonna be a bit of a challenge but like the ones that are going to be a bit more flexible, there's nothing on the back to block them. I think at least you can get a little bit more variability in terms of poses. I, I think, you know, that's kind of the, the sacrifice for metal modular models is you're going to have to have the pieces be a little flat, I think, in order to work well together. So overall, very cool stuff. I know um, Paymaster has mentioned that they were going to be doing more Aztec stuff. And I want to say it was going to be more guys in fancy costumes, armor like this. Sally, I should get out my general. That guy is apparently an officer. Yeah, I figured as much. I don't think outside of, you know, the big wigs, they got really, really into the decked out crazy stuff. But I could be wrong. So I'm very pleased with what I've got. This is my second or third Paymaster Kickstarter. They're very quick and very prompt if you have any issues. Why don't you explain it? So yeah, so there was a slight issue with mine. This is the first time I've backed one of their Kickstarters. So these are my first Paymaster figures. And what I got in my package was legs, a head, and that. So, so bits and I uh, contacted them, and I believe it was yesterday, said he was going to send me the replacement parts, and they arrived today. Are they in California? I, you know what? I didn't check. I just op my... opened the package. And... I was going to say, you can check. I got the box right there. Where is it say? It. Uh, Washington. Okay, so, so they're from Washington. Yeah. Okay. So definitely give them a look. I'm going to put a link to their website in the description down below so you can get a good look at what they got going on and especially if you're any have any interest in you know 
traditional or historical cultural figures on the tabletop that aren't the usual, you know, Europeans or, I mean, I can't think of really any indigenous models that really are, what's the word I'm looking for? To do the cultures justice, I think they really did attempt to make them accurate and appropriate and not caricatures that look Even like... Even the fantasy ones they did. Yeah, they don't look like Fire Forge's Mongol horde. Uh, <laughs> that's about... Yeah. That, that, that's kind of... That's my, my barometer for... for <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, I will wrap this up and we will let you guys go. So, this is, once again, Obscurities and Miniatures with High Lord Tamberlane and our special guest, Barzam, today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll be back soon with these guys painted. See you later.